This is Skywarn 7 weather with meteorologist Joe Belanger. Yesterday was pretty much a 10 out of a 10. Today, very close to that. Maybe the only complaint would be too warm for some of you. I don't know. I'm enjoying it, though. I, it was nice to walk outside in sandals and flip-flops and not have to worry about bundling up like we had last week with that cold, cold weather. You remember that. Then this, you are definitely enjoying. 84 degrees in Wichita Falls. Winds are a little bit stronger, too, out of the southeast. Not a whole lot. 10 to 20 miles an hour. And look at that sky. Beautiful, beautiful blues smiling at us for today. Another nice evening is scheduled for tonight. These temperatures that may be a little warm for some of you will taper back and be just right for everyone this evening. Storm chances begin tomorrow and we're going to stay warm throughout the next couple of days too. No major drop off, not even in the seven day, no major drop off either. That's encouraging. These are our current temperatures, what we're working with right now at this hour. Almost everyone in the 80s, Chickasha, the one exception in at 79, 81 in Duncan, 84 for both Wichita Falls and Lawton, and then one better as we head out towards Altus. Compared to yesterday, we're about 10 degrees warmer. Yesterday, we were 10 degrees warmer than that, so you can see the trend we're going. We will continue the warming trend tomorrow. Doesn't look like 10 degrees, only maybe a couple. The winds have been a little bit stronger, 10 to 20 out of the southeast, so Pumping in a little moisture, you're not really noticing the moisture today as the dew points are on the lower end, but tomorrow after we keep the sustained southeast wind, it, that moisture will build up enough and could lead to some storms sparking off with our satellite and radar, but as we see today, nothing but clear skies. You may see some clouds build up throughout the overnight, and that's an indication of that extra moisture building up, gathering itself together here over Texoma. Today, very comfortable with the dew points in the 40s. Tomorrow, though, up into the 60s, and you can see that does go up into that humid range, and that's what we need when we talk about thunderstorms. So let's look at our forecast this evening. No thunderstorms on the microcast at all. And as we head towards tomorrow morning, pretty mild as you walk out the front door. Have around 60 degrees to start tomorrow morning. Very nice. Tomorrow afternoon, you can see the uh, spotty storm possible, and then later in the day, the later afternoon hours, around the 4 o'clock time period or so, that's when it becomes a little more scattered. We're going to have a dry line pushing through from the west, so we could see some storms, actually a decent chance some storms sparking off, and some of them could go severe too. Best chance for seeing those severe storms, it's going to be west of I-44, large hail and damaging winds, that's for tomorrow. Then we shift it to the other side of things on Thursday. The slight chance of severe weather is going to be mainly east of I-44. That's going to be Thursday. So playing fair here with Mother Nature, giving the west and the east both a shot here for some severe weather, but hopefully just some rain. 59 degrees for your overnight low. Scattered clouds, really nice, very comfortable temperatures tonight. Tomorrow it will be warmer still in the upper 80s and a little more humid. 50% chance of some spotty storms throughout the afternoon hours. We'll keep a close eye on that. And then as we look at your three-day forecast, those rain chances, we're starting to figure out what's going on here with this pattern. Uh, narrowing tomorrow as the best chance day. Decent, uh, some isolated storms possible still Thursday. And then these chances really start to drop off as we head towards Friday. And just in time for the weekend, look at this weekend forecast. 70s and sunny, very comfortable. Winds won't be too bad, especially on Mother's Day. You see light winds. Uh, so, Sarah, it looks pretty good. Are you going to be able to wish your mom a happy Mother's Day this Absolutely. Sunday? Absolutely. That's the, that's the best way to do it with good got, weather, huh? Good weather, some flowers. You've got everything. Better get those flowers. What about I you? I know. We need some water to get the water. <laughs> well, hopefully the rain here the next couple of days. At least water Mother the Na flowers. At least Mother Nature's finally maybe making up her mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she, she seems a little bit more put together now. All right. Thanks, Joe. No problem. It's starting to develop right here. Uh, and this would be the area that we're really intently watching because that's where the tornado could potentially form. Uh, and again, we are under a tornado watch till 9 p.m., so the threat is it's there. Going to Here's continue the to move up. Oscar, Fleetwood, Ringgold. If you're in any of these areas, Terrell, you want to make sure you are seeking shelter, being, getting indoors into a safe location because uh, the developing wall cloud has been reported and you know what the next step is, potentially a tornado on the ground. That's why there is a tornado warning, and that's why. Now, in terms of weather, we're going to see rain, freezing rain, snow. It, if you are west of I-44, it will be a mainly snow event. And then if you are east of I-44, it may start as rain, but it won't last long as rain. It will change over to that snow very quickly, 
It's going to be very cold, and the good thing about that is we won't have to deal with as many ice issues because the temperatures will be well below that freezing mark. You really nailed it right on the head, Justin, by saying it's a windstorm because that's basically what it has turned into. We have to drive a little bit further to the east to find this winter wonderland that we were expecting. As you can see here with the background, uh, a, a good dusting here. We are at live at the intersection of State Highway 65 and 7. Uh, about a dusting, maybe up to an inch. In fact, if we go ahead and uh, pick some of it up, we can see that uh, you can make a little snowball out of this, maybe get out and throw the snowballs around. I don't think you're going to want to do that because the winds are horrendous. We're talking about sustained winds at probably at least 30 miles an hour, I would guess, gusts pushing over 40. They're out of the north, and the snow, it's just blowing it even more with that wind. Uh, the visibility down to about a mile in this area. Now, in terms of the roads, they are very slick. There's this slush on the ground on the roads here. Uh, State Highway 7, I know, has been reporting accidents, cars off into the ditches uh, due to the fact that the roads are slick. So please take your time, especially if you start to come across any kind of winter scenes like what we're seeing here. In fact, here, right here on this fence, this is some ice that is piling up on the fence here. That just shows how cold the temperature is getting. We are definitely dropping below that freezing mark in some spots like here at the intersection of State Highway 65 and 7. So reporting live, meteorologist Joe Belanger, Justin, I'm very jealous of you. Nice and warm in the studio with everyone else. They're scattered all over town and could potentially save your life. But there's so much more to these sirens than what most people really know. Thankfully, we don't hear them that often. But when we do, we know danger is approaching. Clint Wagstaff is the emergency management director of the city of Lawton, and one of his responsibilities is knowing when to sound the sirens. The criteria? 65 mile an hour winds are greater moving towards the city, uh, confirmed funnel or tornado moving towards the city of Lawton. Their purpose may seem obvious, but it's important to be reminded. They're called an outdoor warning device. They are designed to warn people that are outside. Meaning you should not depend on these sirens to warn you if you are inside. Clint recommends another tactic for people who are indoors. I recommend everybody, every household within the county have a uh, no weather radio. Here at the 911 center is where they sound the sirens. Should you ever hear the sirens go off, do not call 911. Rather, check your weather radio or your local 7 News for the latest information. Storm spotters, local radar, and the media all help play a role when it comes to sounding the alarms. But it's up to you to take action and get informed as soon as you hear these sirens sing. For the Skywarn 7 weather team, I'm meteorologist Joe Belanger.